I'm going to put my hands up and say that I am guilty. I have been gatekeeping a particular AI tool for a couple of months now. Now, Borium came onto my radar maybe six months ago, and I thought, let me check it out. Let me see what it's about. Most other AI tools use ChatGPT as their AI model, but this one in particular uses both DeepSeek and GPT. So I was curious, and I've taken a bit of time to explore the platform before bringing it to you and sharing it with you. Now, Borium is your your AI powered academic search for scientists and its primary feature is that it has a science navigator. Essentially what this is, is it uses AI models like DeepSeek and GPT-4 to deliver deep searches and analysis across over 160 million papers, 140,000 journals, and it really empowers scientists and academics and students and doctoral researchers to accelerate their research and to be able to find and digest information quicker. Now in today's video, Video, I'm going to be going through a bit of a walkthrough of Borium as a platform. I'm going to be using it and testing it out with some searches for myself. In particular, I really love the AI summaries and this is where Borium takes a research paper that you may have found through your searches and breaks it down without any prompts, just that's the standard. It breaks it down for you and gives you a full summary of the research paper and then allows you to continue to chat and ask further questions to understand it more. And I just think this is a great way of speeding up the process of reading and understanding and incorporating literature within your research articles or your papers or just part of your research process. Okay, so let's walk through this platform. So when you open up Borium, you see straight away the Science Navigator. So this is your initial hub to be able to ask any scientific question. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see you have academic searches. You also have subscriptions that you might have to journals, your library. You can find other scholars. Your knowledge base is also a place where you've saved all the research papers that you have and a ton of other um, really useful resources as well. So let me start by asking a research question. So I want to say, what are the early biomarkers of Parkinson's disease? I can either do a light search, an expert search, or a deep search, but today I really want to focus on the deep search. I can also modify the sources and also filter uh, by date and things like that, which is pretty standard. So the first thing that Borium has done is understand the research question and identified some keywords. So I think this is fantastic, just pulling out some keywords. And then it looks at some biomarkers and some other kind of important you know, kind of overarching topics to do with this research question. So it's really thinking deeply and making sure that it understands this research question before presenting to me the information. So I hear I have some biomarkers and then you can kind of see it's thinking. So first it's going to prioritize these papers and then it's going to do this oh, it's looked at figure five from this research paper. And it's just thinking, but I do like the fact that you can see the thinking. So this is a particular feature for deep search. Now I've been given 24 references. So these are 24 resources that I should be using as the most important, the most relevant research papers for my research topic. I also have a list of all search results. So the references are 24, which are kind of, you know, kind of just narrowed down, but I can look at a larger list of 93 resources, which would be, of course, all still important, but maybe not as tailored and as narrowed down as the initial list. And then let's go back to the results. So it's given me a synthesized version of um, what the answer to my research question is. So it said, here are some markers and it's given me references even images, and I, I'm, you don't usually get images in with other AI tools when you ask questions. So I was really surprised to see that. And I think this is quite a unique feature of Borium. Um, so I've got different biomarkers. Every single point is referenced, which means I'm able to go to the reference and pull out that information by myself during the reading. But I, I really am surprised and quite impressed by the images that have been presented within this answer. So I think that's really cool and uh, quite unique. You can then close out of the results and look at different scholars and images that are provided to you from this topic. So looking at the related pictures, these are all different images and diagrams from the research papers and it might be helpful to scroll through them and look at them within more detail and this is a great way of doing just that. And then you can look at the scholars who have published research papers within this topic and you can go into their individual public profiles and take a look at other papers that they've researched or even follow or share them as well online. You can also see their co-authors and their research focus and I think this is really handy to see as a whole. But now I want to dive in deeper and look at one of the research papers. So I'm just clicked on 
one of the research papers on the right hand side. I've got the author names, I have the link, um, DOI numbers, etc. I can save them to my knowledge base as well. So that allows me to save papers that I think would be useful to read in the future. I can save it to different folders. I can create kind of different categories of information. So I'm just saying, for example, introduction papers. Um, so I can save these papers into that folder. Then as you scroll down, this is the AI summary and I really love this. So it's given me an introduction of this research paper, but a summarized version. So pathological features, um, different diagnoses and conclusion and keywords and a good figure as well to understand it. And then of course I can open this paper and read it in more detail, but I have such a good summary with the AI summary tool um, that Borum has pre presented to me without even having to ask further questions but I can ask further questions so here on the right hand side there is a box that allows me to chat to the paper and I can ask further questions so I can summarize get findings methods concepts um, but I'm just going to say what are the main key results in this research paper I've also asked what age does early onset start and it says it starts primarily kind of around 65, but it doesn't give a specific age for early onset. So that's interesting. And that means that it's using only information that's extracted from this paper. So if it's not in this paper, it can't give you that, that answer. If the information isn't in this paper, it won't be able to give it to you, which means it's not hallucinating or making up information randomly, which is really important within scientific research. Another thing you can do, which is quite unique to Borium, is you can chat to a number of papers. So I've selected four papers from this list of references, um, and now I can ask questions about those four. And I love that I don't have to like upload these papers or kind of ask individually or kind of attach them. It's just there and I can directly ask about those four papers and it's initially given me a couple of um, questions that are there to kind of tease and give me an idea so I'm just selecting one of them it's only looking and analyzing those four research papers that's really important I've also said what is the gap in literature presented in these research papers I like to ask AI tools this question because it's not always obvious what that gap is and they have to kind of the tool has to kind of analyze within the paper and do some research and understand it a little bit deeper so I feel like it gives me a good understanding of how well the tool understands the research and I think in this case it's quite good um, so it's looked at literature gaps like early diagnosis there's a critical need for different biomarkers like diagnostic biomarkers um, to be able to diagnose in the beginning um, other challenges when it comes to implementation validation feasibility reliability uh, lots of really important things you can also expand the screen as well because I, I do feel like if you're spending a lot of time looking at that small screen it could get a little bit annoying or a little bit difficult so uh, you can actually you can also expand the screen so it's a full screen so you can chat uh, with a full screen as well so it's a small little thing but it makes a difference and importantly I also have my knowledge base so this is where you have all the information that you have collected um, all the research papers that you want to save all in one place and it's meant to be a bit of a knowledge hub where you can organize your papers in a nice way I thought I'd also show you this, which I think is really cool. When you go back to the Science Navigator page, you can go to SciDraw. And I was interested about this because I haven't, again, I haven't seen any other AI tool include something like this within their platform. So this is SciDraw. So you can create an image, a scientific image using AI. Um, so I love that they have some templates here because it gives you a bit of an idea of what you could get at the end. And the templates look so good. You have flowcharts, um, different mechanisms, concepts, different covers, things like that. So you can decide on what template you like. And then when you click on create similar, it gives you this massive prompt um, and then you can basically edit the prompt. So for example, this one is like a flow chart, which I really like and I've created before. Um, so you can just change like the concentrations, the names of things, uh, you know, the timings, etc., to suit your methods and it will create an image for you just like that. Another thing you can do is the general Q&A. So this is where you can just ask a general question. What is the definition of biomarkers? Because that's what I'm looking at. So I, I, you know, I want to quickly add a definition in my essay. So this gives me a quick definition of what biomarkers are. After testing out Borium for the last couple of months, I realized that there are five main things that I really enjoy about this platform. Number one is that the results are really accurate. So any result that you get, any output you get, any explanation you get or definition is always backed by a 
research paper that you can directly open and read for yourself. Second thing is that the database is huge. Um, I mean, this is not uncommon for AI tools like this, but the, it uses such a huge database. And also the AI models that it uses, both DeepSeek and GBT, depending on what you prefer, it just gives you a wider scope of making sure that you don't miss anything out. The third is that it feels like everything is really up to date. So when I do search for things, sometimes on other platforms, you might find that um, papers are a little bit older or you have to specifically filter to make sure that you get papers within a certain date range. But on Borium, so far, I haven't even filtered anything and I only get papers that are in the last kind of three to five years, which is fantastic. So it just shows that any result or output is really in real time. The fourth thing that I really like is that you really get a deep understanding when asking questions on Borium or looking for research questions there. I love how on the AI summary for each paper, you get that summary there without even asking for it. So it just gives you a bit of a deeper understanding automatically. The fifth is that it does not hallucinate and it's really reliable. As you saw, when I asked a question about something that was not in that research paper, it then said to me, sorry, I can't answer it because it's not available in this paper, which obviously is annoying because I want the answer, but it's not in that research paper, so it's not going to make it up for me. If I want to find it, that answer out generally, I can go to the Science Navigator and ask the question generally, and it can search through the host, the database of research papers, but because I'm just asking and chatting to that one paper, it's not there. So that's it, that's the end of the story. So I really, really appreciate that. And that's the end of this video. I really hope that I've introduced a new platform to you that I haven't spoken about before here on this channel, but I was just waiting to make sure that I've tested it out and I feel confident in presenting it to you here on my channel. If you want to try it out for yourself, you can try it out for free. So I leave the link for it down below. Um, let me know if you've heard of Borium before or if this is your first time hearing of this amazing AI tool that I'm sharing with you today. Let me know, I would love to hear from you and I'd love to hear if you have tried it and what you've thought about it, if you have. Hope to see you in my next video. Take care, bye.